Procrastination. This video is all about procrastination from an expert, Nick Vogue. Today's video was sponsored by Mullingers.com, the best motivational clothing brand in the world where you can now get the Rise and Grind t-shirts. But before that, procrastination, and why I'm making this intro so short is because let's not procrastinate. Let's jump into the video with Nick Vogue. How do we fix procrastination? Procrastination is a lot of different things. Uh, it's in the medical terminology when there's a, and sometimes psychological terminology, when there's a lot of related behaviors that sort of connect, but we can't find a single unifying cause, we'll often call it a syndrome. So it might be more act academic, or excuse me, accurate to say a procrastination syndrome, but I don't, I kind of don't love the diagnostic terminology. Actually, I think it sometimes gets in the way. Like I would never say someone is a procrastinator because that's, that's probably not true. You procrastinate maybe 5% of the time. That doesn't define you. Uh, in any event, procrastination from my point of view is a lot of different things because there's lots of different reasons, but it's mainly avoidance. Um, and at the first part, you might think, well, that's obvious, but I would say what's distinguished, distinctive about, so what's distinctive about procrastination is it's actually avoidance of things that we want to do or we think are valuable to us. That's the puzzle, right? So when someone says, Nick, I'm procrastinating from doing my taxes, I hate it, and I explain it, and then somebody else jumps in and says, well, that's dumb, they just don't want to do it. I would say, absolutely right. If you don't want to do it and you don't do it, I don't think there's a puzzle that needs to be explained. Um, however, many people procrastinate thing, on things they value. They do not undertake tasks where they feel an aversion to things that they think are really important to them, even things they like to do, things they care about. And there'll even be a pattern that the more they care about, it, the more they feel the pull to procrastinate. That's a puzzle. There's a fundamental dilemma that people face that I think self-worth theory helps to unpack and unravel, so to speak. So I would argue, or self-worth theory argues that um, this dilemma is if we're gonna demonstrate our worth, if we're gonna achieve something of significance, and again, this is an important fundamental human need. Most people have a sense, a desire to achieve for themselves and be perceived as accomplished, right? It's a fundamental human need. Um, but to do that, that means I need to undertake tasks, activities, do things that are challenging. They're hard, right? So because if I do things that are easy, if I go down the street and I play basketball with the local seven-year-olds and I dunk on them all day, I don't get to say, I'm the greatest basketball player ever. That's too easy of a task. I, that doesn't really demonstrate my academic, my athletic ability. So I must take on a hard task to demonstrate that I have high ability, right? If I do easy tasks, that does not demonstrate that I have high ability that I've achieved. However, as soon as I undertake a hard task, what have I introduced to this equation? I could fail. So the dilemma is I have to navigate these two things. And then if I really care about something, if I fail in an area that I really care about, then the attribution, the implication to myself is greater, right? Because this is the thing I really care about. It's not like I got up on the karaoke and I sounded awful. Well, so I'm not, a, I don't care. I'm not, a, that's, I'm not attached to that. Or I, you know, I made a terrible mess of that, that, uh, that spaghetti that I made. I'm not a chef, you know, whatever, I don't care. But when my identity is wrapped up in it, then what's on the line is not only my performance, but myself, my self-concept and how other people perceive me. So I can, some people really get this example, so let me give it to you. Uh, so when I was in school, I would get really tense writing these papers, right? And I would get, kind of get stuck and I couldn't move. And even if I was writing, I was feeling a lot of anxiety. My heart's beating fast and a lot of physical tension. And if you think about it, that's completely disproportionate to the, even if I care a lot about grades, which I actually I did, but 10% of my grade for that paper, my reaction is completely out of proportion, completely outsized. Right, my physical, my emotional reaction. Why? Because that's not the only thing that's on the line. It's not just the ten percent. That's a reaction to how's my am I going to be perceived? If I get a bad grade, what does that mean about me? I, I've always been told I was a good writer. What happens if I don't attain that? So what's going on is you have these two levels. It's the act and the consequences of that act, the evaluation, and then the meaning of that assessment that appraisal by somebody else and my self-appraisal and if i don't meet my own standards for instance or i don't meet the objective standards then i experience that as failure and failure due to specifically to my inability 
that is evokes shame. So if I'm not capable of doing something, if I'm not able, I don't have the skill, intelligence, strength, uh, we often feel shame. And that's really a powerful motivation that shuts us down emotionally, cognitively. Um, so what procrastination is actually, one way to put it is that procrastination is a way to turn possible shame into probable guilt. Mm. So effort is double-edged. So if I want to protect my sense self as able and capable, smart, intelligent, a great programmer, and I'm up against a task that's going to test my ability, or I have doubts that I can do it, one way to um, prevent the attribution to my ability is actually to not work hard or to not put it, not to be systematic or not to do my best effort, because then I have an excuse. So the argument in procrastination for self-worth theory is we're often creating conditions that prevent a clear, authentic, accurate assessment of our ability so that if we fail, we are we have an explanation. We have a, we have a, that's not about ability. Now, I often feel guilty. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should have put more time in. I shouldn't have procrastinated. We feel guilty. But in our society, guilt is more tolerable. Because if I try, if I put all my effort in, if I do everything I can, if I'm the Hermione Granger at my, at my workplace and I do everything and then I fail, I don't have an excuse. I don't have an explanation except that I am not able. And that evokes shame. And shame is a more powerfully aversive feeling even than guilt. They both feel bad, but shame for most people is actually worse. To be ashamed, to be humiliated uh, because of our sense of ability. Um, and so self-worth theory says people are powerfully motivated to maintain this self-concept, but especially powerfully motivated to defend it, to protect it. So we need to demonstrate to other people, I'm capable, I'm smart. That's a powerful need, but even more powerful is to show to other people, I'm not dumb, I'm not incapable. And those are somewhat different motivations, right? Mm. They lead to different actions. To show I'm not dumb, I won't ask the question of my professor. But if I'm gonna demonstrate to my professor on that exam or to my boss that I'm smart, at some level, I have to figure out what they think and what they need. I can have to ask and I'm gonna show that I don't know. So if I really, truly uh, to excel, I would need to get that information. I would have to reveal my, my ignorance. For most of us, for many of us, we would not do that. It's because it prevents us from feeling that shame, even though it sabotages right? Or limits our ability to meet that expectation or need because we don't really know what they want or need. Thank you so much to Nick. An incredible video. Procrastination seems to be a theme amongst people who watch our channel. It's one of those things that I think high achievers have to battle with on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, I was looking into research recently and if you have a creative mind and a, and a mind that thinks differently, procrastination actually is more intense for yourself. It, procrastination is your brain seeking to do things. And it's very, very difficult to wrestle with. And it's why I think we find a lot of entrepreneurs on here, artists on here saying, how do I deal with procrastination? I hope this helped. Nick's stuff is gonna be linked down below. Go check that out. Stop procrastinating, guys. It's not that easy, but it is as well. To stop procrastinating. I have to battle with this all the time, procrastination. For me, I use this, and this is not just a segue. I use this, it's a, not a journal, and it's time blocking. So I have a list of getting stuff done and I'll tick them off through the day. If I get that done, it doesn't matter if I procrastinated slightly, uh, but usually because I'm trying to nail the list, I don't procrastinate. And this book is at mulliganbrothers.com, the best motivational clothing brand and, co and company in the world, um, I would say that. But you can get these there. The Rise and Grind t-shirts are there as well. Uh, guys, look. With procrastination, the one thing you don't want to do is beat yourself up about it and get into a cycle constantly of procrastinating all day, reaching the end of the day, what, feeling guilty, then going back into the next day and procrastinating. You need to break the cycle somehow and you do that through practical application. And however that is, you don't have to be this book, it can be loads of different ways, but practical application. Turn your internet off, turn your Wi-Fi off, log yourself out of social media. For If, if, you, if it, the goal is that important, you need to do these things. Um, guys, sorry, that's a bit of a rant. I wrestle with procrastination. My brothers, my sisters wrestle with procrastination at work. And it's just part and parcel of trying to become successful, but there are ways to deal with it. Anyway, if you want to see what I get up to, if you want to hear more from me, go over to Instagram at Jordan Mulligan River. Come say hello. 
and have a blessed and productive day. I'll see you in the next one. Go do something. Peace.